OpenAI recently announced something called function calling and in this video we're going to explore everything that you need to know about function calling with hands-on code which I'll share it in the YouTube description. To start with what is function calling that's what something that we need to understand. If you are a developer and you have been developing applications or web applications using OpenAI especially ChatGPT type applications you would have been struggling with one thing which is to get a proper JSON output. There are a lot of libraries that were already trying to help you to get a proper JSON output. A JSON output is like this. For example, you want like there is a lot of things in the message and the output that you want is just like this. It's not very straightforward from ChatGPT and the OpenAI API has not been helping for this until now. So to get that, to have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object that contains arguments to call a function, a particular function that you want to call is what the function calling is trying to do. It's actually more than that, but in the simplest way, you have a prompt that you send it to API and that open API gets a, gives a response back to you. And that response is not a text response, but you can extract a JSON object from that, like certain objects from that is what function calling at the foundation level is trying to help you. Now, this is a new way for you to connect the GPT capabilities to external tools and APIs, in fact, to chat GPT plugins. So these models have been fine tuned to both detect when a function needs to be called based on the user input and also to respond with a JSON that adheres to the function's signature that sticks to the function's signature. So that's very important. Like if you have a template of a function that takes a particular argument, this will help you get that in the structured data back. Now let's jump into our examples. Now the function calls can help you do three things. I'll show you the examples. The first one is it can help you create chatbots like intelligent chatbots that can answer questions by calling external tools. For example, you can call an API or you can call chat GPT plugins or you can call anything that you want. It could be inside Langchain, it could be outside Langchain, it could be anywhere or in simply with an open API. So first thing where you are going to use function call is to create chatbots or to create communication platforms where the user is asking a question that cannot be answered by default only with chat GPT or GPT-4. So it has to go to an external tool. And in this case, you need to make an API call and that is where you can use function call. The second one is when you want to convert your natural language into an API call. So the first one is you're going to call an API based on the output. The second one is to convert your natural language into an API call or a database query. Like there is a question and you want to convert it into a SQL query. You can do that with function calls. And finally, at the foundation, like I said, you have a text and you want to extract structured data like a JSON from the text you can use function call. These are like three different aspects of how you can use function calls. But at the foundation, like we discussed, it's basically trying to convert your text to response into a JSON so that you can play with that object. What are the examples? The first example is, let's say you want to build a system in which a user can send an email, like part of the conversation, they can send an email. Like for example, if the user sends a message saying, email Anya to see if she wants to get coffee next day next Friday. So for a typical email, you need three things. One, you need to know how to call the email, which is a function. The second one, you need to know the two, which is to whom you are sending it. And the third one is the body of the email, one of the most important aspect. So leaving out the function call in itself. So you need two main components, one to whom you are sending the email. Second one is what is that email that you want to send? If you look at this particular text, it's very obvious as a human being that you want to send the email to Anya, which is the to address. And what is the body of the email? Like, do you want to get coffee next Friday? That's the body of the email. So now this is one of the examples where you can take this text, you can send this text to ChatGPT and ChatGPT will give you the email body like this, the email function, which is you already have caught and the two address, which is Anya's email ID from, you know, some other database that you can look into and the body of the email that would probably say, do you want to get coffee next Friday? This the, like the simplest example. The next one is if you want to call weather API. So typically when you ask questions like what's the weather and weather like in Bengaluru, 
chat gpt will not give you an answer that's the example that we are going to see but to call a weather api you need to know the location of for our city for which you want to see the weather and you want to see what unit you want the result to be in a celsius or fahrenheit different countries measure weather in different unit and especially in india it's very common to measure weather in celsius like if you see in bangalore so people would say 32 degrees celsius so you are giving this choice as well so now it's a weather api let's say that weather api is called um, some api and you're going to use a function called get underscore current underscore weather and it's going to use two arguments and chat gpt or gpt4 api can give you this as a response if you use function calls the third example is um, a very popular example that everybody is almost interested in these days is to convert a natural language question into a function or a SQL query. So if you are if you have a chatbot internally in your company, you, you are going to let people ask questions. So you can ask a question, who are my top 10 customers this month? And the function call will enable you to build a system that can translate that natural language question into a function like this or a SQL query like this. How many orders did Acme Inc place last month that can be converted into a SQL query thanks to function calls. And finally, the most foundational simplest example is you have got a bunch of text, like for example, you have got a Wikipedia article and all you want to know is the details or the date of birth of the people mentioned in the Wikipedia article. So you can have a function here and that function needs things like the name of the people mentioned in the Wikipedia article, their birth date and the location. These can be extracted from the Wikipedia article thanks to the function call that is available in OpenAI API. Now that's enough of talking. Now we are going to get in the hands-on coding example. So this example is going to give you a complete information about how you can use function call in your own code. For this, we are using OpenAI package, but if you want to make this also as part of, um, let's say your HTTP request, you can use the rest of the part of the code to do it. But right now I'm using OpenAI API to show you how to do that. First pip install OpenAI API sorry, OpenAI, which is a Python library that helps you connect with OpenAI API. Once you have installed OpenAI Python package, then you can import OpenAI. And we are going to use certain elements that OpenAI actually suggested in their documentation. Tenacity, retry, wait random exp exponential and stop after attempt is to make retry calls for the API. If you are trying this code on your terminal, this will give you a colored output. You know, if you're going to have a chat, it will give you a colored output. That's why we are using colored. And of course, to make any function call, we need requests. Next, we need to choose what model that we are going to use. We are going to use the GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613, which is the latest model of the chat GPT version. We're going to use that. The next one is you need to have your OpenAI API key. So that can be added by OpenAI.API underscore key equals the API key that you have got please make sure you do not hard code the API key. For example, it, this could be part of your environment variable where you can use import os, os.n1 and extract that as well. Or even if you write this, you can next delete the particular component so that that is not available as part of the code in itself. But the most important thing is do not, do not, do not give that as part of the key. The next thing that you need to do is you need to it's up to you. You can either make the call directly or you can have like a utility function, which is specified in OpenAI cookbook to have this entire setup, like where you can create a function that's called chat completion request. I'm not going to get into the details here, but simply this is like a utility function that wraps around how you make calls to OpenAI API. So this is where the OpenAI API request is and uh, you can make the call here. So that's, that's simply. Uh, what this is doing, but again, you can do it without this also. You can directly use the OpenAI package and do it instead of using request also. That's up to you completely. So if you want to use request, you can use this particular piece. If you do not want to use request, then you can directly go with OpenAI API. The next thing is we are going to define a simple class that's for conversation because we're trying to build like a chatbot where you can chat and it gives you a response and it also has got a role. So you can define this class conversation. I think very serious in this, uh, like I said, if you are using within terminal, it is going to give you color, but everything other than that is a very simple OpenAI API. I've got a separate video on OpenAI API in itself. If you have detail, if you have questions, I'll link that in the YouTube description so you can check it out. 
Now is the main part where you have to first specify a function specification. You have to tell ChatGPT how the function is going to look like. And that's where you're going to specify. Okay, the name of the function is get underscore weather underscore get underscore current underscore weather. This is the name of the function. Then you give a description about what the function is and you're going to specify the parameters of the function. What type of parameter it is. It is a type object and what are the properties? The properties are one, it is a location. The second one, it is a format. The location is what we want, like a Bengaluru, a San Francisco, California, whatever it is. And the format is where we are going to specify. It should be either Celsius or Fahrenheit. And inside location, you're going to specify the type and the description. And description is how ChatGPT will understand what to pick from that response or the text. And the format, again, you have got to give the enum, like if you are going to manually give the categories and the description, what the template temperature unit to use, infer this from the user's location. So if I'm trying to ask for Bengaluru, it would assume that I'm, I live in India. In India, people mostly use Celsius. Or if I'm asking it from the US, it would assume that, okay, in the US, people usually use it um, or denote it in Fahrenheit. So I should represent it in Fahrenheit. So that is a that is a decision that OpenAI API will make here based on the function call and the particular geo. What are the required fields? You need at least location and format. This is how you specify a function specification. This function specification is going to tell OpenAI API to particularly look for these particular details and we're going to just say. So now we have already defined the class. So we're going to invoke it like we're going to create an object conversation and we're going to add a user message and then say user is saying who's the, this is the role and what is the weather like today in Bengaluru, Bangalore. Without a function call, I'm first calling this without a function call. So I'm going to say chat completion request, which is what we call, we defined at the start chat completion request. And I'm sending the conversation history here. There's a conversation, conversation history and the function is none. So we are not giving any specification here. And then the response is 200, which means we have got a successful response. And if I print that particular text, you can see that it says, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I do not have real time data. I suggest checking in reliable weather website or using a weather application to get the current weather information for Bangalore. This is not the desired application. What we want to do is we want to use ChatGPT to extract this information and ultimately call a weather API where we will send two information. One is the location, second one is the format so that the weather API can give us the response back. That is not possible without function call. So what we are going to do now is we are going to do the same call. We are going to do the same chat completion request, making calls to open a API with the same conversation, but now with functions. So this functions, where does it come from? It comes from the function specification that we just gave within which we specified what the function should be. What are the arguments that we are looking for? What are the types of the arguments and what kind of details it has got? That's what we have specified in the function specification. And that is a call that we are going to make here. So we make the call, same information, same conversation, but with functions, unlike before where we did not give the function. Once we send that, we get the response back. Once we get the response back, it's a JSON object. We can print that object and then see we have the chat ID. We have the object. We have the timestamp when it was created. We have the model when it was the model that was used to create this. And we have the choices within that. You can see the message inside the message. You can see what is the role, the assistant, which means it's a response back from chat GPT for the user message, the content, there is no, but the content is done because it's it's ultimately like we are getting the function call. The function call, the name of the function is get current weather and the arguments is location is Bangalore and the format is Celsius. Finish reason, why did it finish? It's a function call. It's not the message response content. And the total prompt tokens 102, completion token is 25, total token is 127 for which we are going to be built. And I can literally import JSON and load the response in JSON and get the location and format which now I can pass to a weather API to get the weather for Bengaluru if you're building an application. To show you another example, let's look for another region where they are going to use Fahrenheit. So I'm going to say, what is the weather? So let me copy this text, come back here. What is the weather like today in um, 
let's say New York. Okay. Say so this is a message that get added to the conversation. Now I'm going to call this. This is with the function call. I'm going to call this. And once I have called this, you can see it's going to give me the entire response. And okay, in New York also they use Celsius. I don't know. I thought it might be fair in it. Maybe it's not. Cool. Anyways, import JSON. JSON print it. And then it gives New York and Celsius. You can now ask for a different city. San Francisco. Add it. Ask it. Print the response. San Francisco format Celsius. I think maybe something wrong with the Celsius, uh, the format thing. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think in the US they use Celsius. Um, my bad. Um, but maybe let me ask for Je Berlin. Berlin. Function call. It it gives the Celsius for everything. So maybe something is wrong with that. But you get the point. The whole point is to send. A question to chat GPT but instead of making chat GPT answer it you get structured data from that which can be now sent to an external API and like I said there are more things that you can do whether you want to convert the natural language into a database query or extract structured information from a given page this all could be done using function calls this is a tremendous update if you have been thinking something like I'm thinking this is the territory where Langchain was an undisputed king now looks like chat GPT is entering into this. You can literally use Langchain tools for the same thing, but now chat GPT has or OpenAI has stepped into that territory. I'm really looking forward to see how this is going to play in the longer term. But for now, um, it seems like an exciting thing, especially if you're a developer who had to call external APIs based on chat GPT or OpenAI responses. This is an amazing opportunity to use function calls. I hope this was helpful to you. I will link the Google Collab Notebook in the YouTube description and I will also link my OpenAI API video in the YouTube description and also the documentation. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the video. See you in another video. Happy prompting.